Hey, welcome back, Cloud Scholars. I hope everyone out there is having a great day. So what I want to do today is I want to talk about a few different things when it comes into the directory integration. I know we've been in here the last couple of videos, but there's a lot of stuff for us to cover, and I definitely want to show you all of that good stuff. So I'm going to come back over here to agents. We talked about that. Over here, we're going to talk a little bit about provisioning. So I'm going to walk you through the provisioning tab. Uh, provisioning tab has a lot of good stuff, a lot of things that you're going to need to know, know within Okta. Uh, we have auto import into Okta. We have the manual import users and groups into Okta. We also have push groups. And then we're going to sign into Okta with one of our new users that we're going to do for our manual imports. Okay, so back at the Okta screen, you should see it looks like my screen. We talked a little bit about this warning message. So this is on this settings, we have two app, right? So provision and two app. So if we're thinking about that, if we click on edit, let's walk through some of the stuff that it talks about. It says create or links a user in Active Directory and assign in the app to a user, activation email recipient, enter email address where the new Active Directory account credentials are sent to. So you may have some type of help desk that it gets sent to and then they work on that user. Depends on your organization. Then AD user format from Okta username, uh, you have custom, all this other stuff. We can leave it the way it is right now, or you could do email. It's totally up to you. Uh, update user attributes enabled. Okta updates a user's attributes active directory when the app is assigned. Um, you can have deactivate user, deactivate a user's active directory account when it is unassigned in Okta and, or their Okta account is deactivated. Definitely something that I would recommend doing. Then we also have the sync password, right? And we're going to talk a little bit about that a little bit more. It creates an Active Directory password for each assigned user and pushes it to Active Directory. So right now we have our users going one way. This is saying that it has a password that Okta is your source of truth and it is making sure it pushes that down to Active Directory. And then we have these different scholars, uh, cloudscholars.com attribute mappings over here. So I'm going to come back up here and I'm going to go and say to Okta. So over here, we say import users from Active Directory to create new users to uh, Okta, Okta users. So remember, Active Directory, this is what we have a set up now to Okta. So this is where we can do a schedule import. So if I edit this, I can say schedule import, select never if you prefer to import manually. We are going to do manual imports for this lesson, but I did want to show you how you can do an auto um, import. So over here. Um, in a production environment, normally you would say, I'm going to have it running every hour, every two hours, every two days, once a day. You're probably going every hour in a production environment when you're making these changes or every two hours or so, right? Um, down here, Okta user name format. We could do custom. Um, let me back out a little bit. Keeps doing that. Um, you can do email address, all this other stuff. We'll leave it the way it is. Um, uh, just in time provisioning, we have create and update users to log in if you wanted to. Just in time provisioning requires delegated authentication to be enabled, and we're going to get into that a little bit later in another video. Uh, do not import users, skip users during import. Um, and then you also have activation emails. Don't send new user activation emails for this domain if you wanted to do that. So I'm going to cancel out of that, make sure nothing gets saved. And then you also have user creation and matching and so on and so forth. A couple of different things that we could talk about a little bit later. So let's go back to our agenda and see where we're at. All right. So now we need to do, we talk a little about the auto import into Okta. Let's talk about manual import users and groups and then push groups. So over here on import, now on yours, you know, if you're following along, um, I already went ahead and I did a manual import already. So if you have some dummy data that's in Active Directory, um, what you would do is um, you would come over here and then you can say import now, right? So if I click on import now, it gives us options. What type of import would you like to do? You have new users created in Active Directory will be created in Okta. You have existing users modified in Active Directory will be modified in Okta. You have users disabled. So the following actions are performed by both imports and it lets you know exactly all these different options. So group and OU changes in Active Directory will be reflected in Okta. So you could do incremental, which is the fastest, or you could do a full import. So I'm going to go incremental and I'm going to go import. And that was our just in user. So zero user scans, zero users uh, uh, scanned um, and is giving us that information. So it's saying assigned new Okta user, just in user, right? So let me check over here, confirm assignment. And it says click confirm to complete the following assignment. So that was already shown up in mine. I'm gonna walk through it again for you. We also have this auto activate users after confirmation. I'm gonna leave it empty.
and then now this is blank. So let me go through this one more time with you from the very get go. I had this already here just so it makes more sense. So what I want to do is real quick, I want to go back to the provisioning tab and I want to go to integrations. And right now we only have this OU being synced up. I'm actually going to check all this off for OUs for imports for our users and then all of this checked off for our groups, right? Um, right here, it says enable delegated authentication to Active Directory. Enable delegation authentication, you want Active Directory to re-authenticate your users when they sign into Okta. So we'll leave this, I'm gonna hit save, and that will be that. So now it will be importing a lot of more users into Okta. Matter of fact, let me take this off. I don't wanna have it that way. I'm gonna leave it the way I have it, and I'll just leave it as groups right here for both and I'll hit save. I'll leave it as that, right? So now what I wanna do is I wanna go back into my Active Directory. All right, so back over in Active Directory, I am going to come here and I'm gonna create a new user. So this is going to be So new user and in here, I'm going to call it Lance Green Lance.Green and I'm going to click on next and put a password. Click on next, finish. So now we have Lance Green on our Scholars users. So back over here, I'm gonna go over to import. And if I go to import, I'm gonna click import now. And I'm gonna click on the import uh, as well. Let's see if any new users populate. So we'll show our Lance Green. So it says one new user imported, zero existing users updated, five existing users unchanged, users removed, four groups scanned, four existing groups unchanged. So we have this new user, Lance Green. If I click over here and I say confirm assignment, I do have the option for auto activate users after confirmation. So I'm gonna auto activate the user. And remember I had another user as well um, that I was signing in that user you're going to see when we get to users is will show the same exact way where I will need to activate that user. So I'm going to click confirm. This is now emptied, right? So now if I come back over here to people within here, if you notice, it says Lance green and the status, it says active, right? But remember we had earlier in the video, we had this user called Justin user and it says stage, I need to activate this user. So I could come over here and I could simply activate the person, show user activation email, show active director user email activation. I'll just click activate the person. And then now this person is activated. Now down here were a bunch of users that I had, like Bruce Wayne, Jeff Green, um, Brian Doe, Drea Campbell. All these users um, came in, right? um in my um active directory um a while back right and this is when i first uh did the sync up i never went came over here and activated these users so if i come over here and i click activate and i refresh you see they're starting to show active so this one's active that was the bruce uh wayne so it means we drea campbell if i activate person let's see how drea campbell comes up so now Drea Campbell is now active, right? So now we are able to active those. So if we come back over to directory integrations and we go back to our active directory, we can easily, um, when we did the import, we could have done it a little bit different. So let's do another import, but this time let's do a group. So I'm gonna come back over here. I know this is the group that is, um, my mouse wants to move. And I have a bunch of different groups here. So let me create a new group. And I will call this group application 
I'll call it EMR team. And I'll leave it as that so we have a new group. So back over here, I'm gonna click on import now and I'm gonna go to fastest. One new group imported. Let's see what the group is. We come here. EMR team. So that group is there and you see there's zero people um, in that uh, uh, team, right? There's no people assigned in that as well. So now you understand how to do imports for groups and also for users. Okay, so now that we're over at push groups, what we want to do is we want to take a group from Okta and push it down into Active Directory. So let's go to groups. And what I want to do is I want to add a group. And I'm going to call this the knock team. And I'll keep it that way and I'll throw it here and I'll hit save. Okay, now that we have our knock team, we have zero people in there as of right now. I'm going to click on knock again. And what I want to do is I want to assign it. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna click assign and I'll just throw some people in there. I'll take Brian and I'll take Justin user and I'll click done. So we've got two people in there, Justin and Brian are in our knock team. So now I'm going to come back to directory integration. I'm going to active directory and go back to push groups. And what I want to do is I'm going to find a group knock team shows up. Now over here, if you look at it, uh, you probably click on this, right? But if you hit this uh, object right here, it opens up and then you can see the rest of the OUs. And you could drop it specifically in the OU you need access to. Now remember, we're only syncing two OUs into uh, from Active Directory, which is the scholars underscore group. And then we also have the scholars underscore users. But this is a group, so it needs to go into a group one. And then over here, what you want to do is um, it's just match and result push action. So you can actually create a group to go into um, AD or you can link a group. What we're going to do is we want to make sure our group's uh, scope is not domain local. We leave it as global and group type. We can do distribution or you could do security. Now, there's a couple things I want to show you on the AD side that you really need to take into account when you are pushing groups. Now you can encounter some errors when you're pushing groups. And a lot of times uh, these two options here will really fix those problems, right? So you wanna make sure your Okta service account permissions uh, that you give that account access to create groups. So give Okta service account permissions to create groups. And then you also wanna make sure after you give them a service account to create groups, you wanna do a reboot to make sure those permissions are uh, effective within your domain controller. So. Um, if you, th for me, I'm going to go into the domain control and I'll show you exactly what permissions I gave to the Okta service account. But before I go ahead and show you the, on the AD side, I want to show you something. Um, so basically what happens is you'll get error messages like the one here. So this is the group push functionality allows pushing existing Okta groups in their membership to provision enable third party applications. These memberships are then sourced by Okta. So let's say this person pushed group testing. So this is a group that they were pushing and you'll see that the way this is supposed to work, this is going to Okta to Okta, but there's an error that you're getting. And right here it says cause and solutions, right? So there's a bunch of different solutions here and this is how you would wanna troubleshoot when you run into issues with Okta, you take that error message and you simply Google it and then you could get a whole bunch of forms that will pop up. Now I'm not gonna go through all of this right here, but right here is the line that I'm referring to um, within the PowerPoint deck. To push groups to Active Directory, the permissions to create groups in Active Directory is required. So you need to make sure that your service account has those right permissions because you're gonna run into errors. Okay, so back at the domain controller, you can see that we have our scholars group and we've got a couple of groups here already. If I refresh this, there's nothing really showing up. Um, it's just the same. So I haven't pushed that group as of yet, but I do want to show you what the user for our Okta service account has access to. So over here in properties, if I go here, I will look at members of, and in here I can see it's a part of the domain admins user group. 
Now, for your organization, you may not want to do that because it's very, you, you want to make sure who has access to that domain admin users group and you want to limit how many accounts. This is a service account. So is it necessary for you to do that? I probably would say probably not because you don't really need that for Okta. So what you could do is you want to give them, you could create another group, throw this service account in that group, and then over here you can modify the permissions for this OU and say what do you want that account to have access to do. Full control, read, write, so on and so forth. And then this would should be suffice instead of doing the domain admins group. Now this is a test environment, so that is why I am doing it that way. But for your production environment, for your organization, your company, you probably don't want to do it in that manner. All right. So now that we have that sorted out, let's jump back over to Okta. So back over at Okta, I have my NOC team. I'm saying it's going to go to the scholars underscore group and it's global and security. So let's go ahead and save that. And right here, it says push in. And it says active. Right, so we have a couple options. We can deactivate the group push, stop pushing group membership. We can unlink the group push, or we can say push this group to memberships to Active Directory. So I'm gonna make sure I click on this push now. And it already went through the push. I'm just showing you that you can do that. And then now when I go back to AD, let's see what shows up. So back to AD, Scholars Group, and I'm gonna refresh. And here we see our knock team, right? Here we see the new team that shows up. If we go and we right click and go to properties and we see group type security, global, and then we go members, we can see our two members, the Brian Doe and Justin User. So that is how you would go about pushing groups to AD. So, all right, so I wanna thank you all for watching this video. Um, as always, please smash that like and subscribe button. Um, if you have any questions or anything like that, please let me know. Um, I enjoy making this course for you. Um, as well, um, you know what my goal is, is to get you from scholar to consultant and of course, consultant to expert. Thank you and see you next time.